what we have here is a picture of the original brothers and sisters, and Daddy's going to point to them and tell us who they all are. Well, this is my grandmother. This is my father. This is my mother. And this is me. That's you. Right. This is Madeline, Katrude, Cadet, and Alva, and our brother. Your brother Ellie. Brother Ellie. And your daddy's name was also Solon. Solon right? Senior. This is Solon Junior. And your grandmother was Susan Gamble. So we were thinking it would be really neat to get you all to talk a little bit about what things were like when Daddy was little, or when he was big and you were little. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, some of those stories that we don't want to lose. But this way you don't have to write them down. Well, it was too long ago when she and I were little. I remember when you were When I was that little. Yeah, that's right, right. Absolutely. Well, you know, the only time that we left, that I remember, Right, and this one got sick. That's right. Oh, I was mad. Yeah. And just on uh, Saturday morning, the booth called and said we'd better come home. That was before me and everybody ever got out of the bed. I would come and woke us up. Yeah. into the house. And I thought, boy, when I get married, I hope my husband will take the suitcases in for me. And the question is, <laughs> does he? <laughs> but I, I, you know, I just thought that was just the neatest thing. Uh, but I'll tell you, a long, I guess about that time was when I really began having a feeling for Solon and Irma, or Solon as a brother. I mean, you know, literally, you were just a strange person. He because, still is a strange person. Right, I agree. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I don't, of course I don't remember Solon being at home. I got my, I was born the night Madeline was got mad. Oh, you know, okay. and Solon and those were not there. But um, I remember that, you know, that Irma could do no wrong. <laughs> and as far as Daddy was concerned, was Irma was number one. Whatever Irma said or wanted, that was it. <laughs> and you know, then we stopped by you all's house on our honeymoon. And I think it was, you know, long in that time was when I felt like that you all were somebody that, you know, that I loved. Because there was no brotherly feeling. Yeah. You just really didn't know. I didn't. And then as I got older, the whole You didn't sure. go to M.A. Woodward? And my Lou jumped out the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, my oh, Lou ran away. Oh, we need to hear that. My Lou, they want the story on you and your wedding day oh, and how it happened. Oh, please. Absolutely. Yeah. I've never heard of it. I don't have anything to tell. <laughs> 
Tell it, Natalie. They want that. I've already told them that you slipped out. You ran away and got married. This girl spent the night with me, so since she was going to do that, we slipped in the guest room. And so I walked out the door. I didn't climb out the window, but I had the chair. Then Mary, they called her, called, Daddy called me. He, she said, um, she, no, she ain't. She looked around. She said, she must have went out the window because um, there's a chair down there. Oh, How old were you? Eighteen. Oh, oh. You didn't know as much as it is. Well, I can't People understand don't this. Well, there was one pile, one pile looking for you to put the water on. The soup. Well, Sally was born that morning. Well, Sally the morning yeah. was born. In the confusion, right. she slipped off. I was trying to No, but Sally was laughing at her. How what evil is that? Madeline slipped out and I slipped in. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to help Madeline out with Daddy, so I was being bold, see. I, I don't understand how she had nerve enough to do that. Do you, Sola? To our Daddy, do you know how she had nerve enough to walk out like that and marry all of us? Well, he to our with our Daddy. That time yeah, but he was going to wake up, Madeline, and yeah. <laughs> think it through. Well, I wasn't there when he woke up. <laughs> what, what did your daddy have to say when he found out Aunt Mary Lou had run off? I have no idea. <laughs> That'll be good on the tape. <laughs> well, I have no idea. But I can say this. As the years went by, my father didn't think of any more of any other brother and son-in-law than he did of our Lord. Right. Right out there. I don't know if you ever remember Cadet Side Yard would be a big old pile of wood that they would burn in the fireplace and the heater. I remember the heater, the wood stove. Oh, no, Jason McCree was the best looking thing on earth. <laughs> and he would come up there on those thoroughbred horses. And I liked him, you know, and I think he kind of liked me. <laughs> and I would get on the top of that wood pile, and that wood would start slipping, and he had that horse right at the foot of that wood pile. And I'd try to, I'd look at the car in the yard, and I'd try to figure, how can I get to the car without the horse getting me? And I went for it one time, and when I got in the car, the horse's head was in the car. And from that day to this, I never did like any horses. Mm. Now, Daddy tells stories about the, the oranges and the apples and nuts and stuff for Christmas presents. Right. Had things changed any from the time he remembers a child and that you remember? Not a whole lot. We had we got the grapes on the little stems, you know, the little dried grapes. Raisins. Raisins. With the seed on them. Yeah. We put out <laughs> shoe boxes for Christmas. There was nine of us, nine shoe boxes. So, we usually had apple and orange, some sparklers, maybe a little toy. And that was what Santa Claus brought us, you know. And then Johnny and us get everything for Christmas. You had your names on the shoebox. On the shoebox, absolutely, to be sure. The Santa Claus would put it in the right shoebox. That's all we had, Johnny. It was a little shoebox. You can see where he comes out of the fireplace, too. Right. 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 I'd get up with him. And the big deal was to see who would do the first firecrackers in the neighborhood. You know, whether it's going to be cutting Mackey or us or what you would get it and shoot the firecrackers. We got firecrackers. Sparkles. On Christmas morning. That was Santa Claus probably. I'm going to ask you the question I was supposed to ask you last night and didn't get in. Okay? How about telling them, because I've heard the story, but I don't think Glenda has, and Glenn may not have, about how little you were when you were born. Of course, you remember this well, <laughs> but I know you remember being told about it. Well, I really forgot the fires, but they nursed me on a pillow. Mm -hmm. Nursed you on what? On a pillow. Back in the days, you know, that you were in the country, you didn't do what you would do now you had that little baby. But they didn't dress me. They just took me off. 
Well, to begin with, Mom, how, what age were you? How many months along were you when you were born? Oh, I was a fool. Oh, you were a full term baby? Full term time. No, 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 no. No, Mom. You don't forgot. I you think I was seven months. You were our brother was talking about it. But well, maybe my brother knew. And uh, I remember our father saying that they had degrees. Yeah, they didn't dress me. The sheet or whatever, and all that. And they also fed you with a medicine drop. See, it seemed like he remembered better than I did. And you never did cry until, until when you were, would have been nine months when you were supposed to have been born. That's the first time you cried. Well, I remember he down there told me he kept fire, you know, we didn't have any heat. So he had to burn fire all night long. Keep the house warm enough? I yeah. forgot how many weeks he said he never did take his shoes off. But far as remembering my mother, Sora remembers no battle he remember. I remember my mother when she was laid out in the living room. Mm -hmm. That's when they did that and they had to take a big film. Yeah. But um Sora cried a long time to tell me after he heard an organ play. Each time he'd hear it. He got back with it. The only thing I remember is being in Indian Town and somebody when they played the organ, they had to take me out of the church doing the service. And for a long time. You associated I, that organ playing with the death of your mom. Always sad. <laughs> well, Daddy, can you go down starting with Uncle Ellie? Go down all the brothers, well, the, not the two brothers, <laughs> well, the half-brothers. Uh, go down through the whole brothers and sisters and half-brothers and half-sisters just by name. This, this is your test. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can try. you try? Try it. No, I mean, as far as Darcy our, our brother is Ellie, which he married him, married which he named himself when he was 12 years old. Wasn't he Solon to start with? He was Solon Jr. and he didn't like to be Solon Jr. So uh, he changed his name. So then when I was born, my, my, my father named me Solon. Um, okay, is Al is older than Bubba? No, Bubba Dill was there. It was Anna? Anna was there. Yeah. Then Bubba, yeah. then Al, then Al, then Cadet, then Katrude, and then Madeline, and then me. I got a picture of that. And then it was Edith, Mildred, Sally, no, wait a minute. Marvin. Marvin, Everett, I don't know. All I can Hazel. think of is Buck. Okay. And that's where I, you know, the nicknames that you, now I know are Everett, but, uh... Clefton was his name. Clefton, thank you. And then there's, um, uh, Hazel. And then Simon. And then Simon. Edith, Edith's older than Simon. Edith is the oldest. And then Simon. And then Simon. It was Anna Maud. Anna Maud. Anna Maud. Anna Maud. Well, what is His real name is Bertha. Bertha, yeah. That's what I was saying. Your, your hair is so much of the nicknames. nicknames. It's hard mm -hmm. to
church and cemetery in Indian Town, South Carolina. April 22, 1882. This was my father's grandmother. The mother of my father's mother. Stone is too worn for the camera to pick up. But it is Annie Gamble, my father's mother. In other words, I am around. All right, you know, but now are you, are you getting your bearings with your home elder? And she was the oldest of the children. I don't know how the, the son is on the grave. And when did she die? In 1903. And you figured she was 11? She was born in 19. 1892. We're here at Cedar Grove Baptist Church to see where my grandfather Neesmith and some of my aunts are buried. So Neesmith and my stepmother Rosa Neesmith is buried. Okay, this is Uncle Dez and Aunt Gerdette's grave. Tyler's joined the Neesmith family when Uncle Milton married Aunt Gertrude. But see, this cemetery was on our father's estate. Here's the grave of George W. Neesmith my father's grandfather died in 1910 been born in 1838 this is my stepmother's brother that would be grandmama rose's brother yeah and my brother was holding him when he died on our property Heart attack or? No breathing problems. Yeah. It says, sacred to the memory of Samuel Neesmith, who departed this life in the 65th year of his age, A.D. 1858. He left an affectionate wife, eight children, and numerous friends to lament their irreparable loss. He was truly an honest, meek, inoffensive man, loved by all who enjoyed his worthy principles. And there's a quote that says, Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Now, Daddy, you remember who Samuel Neesmith would have been? 
at that age. I am guessing that he was a father of the other Neesmiths that I was telling you about. I, I really don't know. Daddy doesn't remember the relationship between Willie Neesmith and his family. And the tombstone does not give a date of his death. Although I would venture a guess that because it does say what company he was in and the cavalry and mention the Confederate States of America that he may well have been killed during the Civil War. Here we have the grave of Sergeant John L. Neesmith, who was in Company E of the 10th South Carolina Infantry in the Confederate States of America. The stone has sunken some, and grass has grown up, but you can still see that. baptized them and when they came out of the water where their knees wouldn't show. father's house when he was a child. Gamble House near Neesmith, South Carolina. It's been restored and is where Solon Neesmith's mother lived when she was Annie Gamble, before she was Annie Gamble Neesmith. It's an unusual architecture. That was one of the reasons they restored it. A newspaper article said they thought it could have been Late, uh, late 1700s, perhaps even pre-revolutionary. Catherine was saying that they painted it white to try and save the wood, even though the house never was painted white when people lived there. The house from the back 
you can see the windows are all shuttered closed. I'm sure at one time there was a porch off that door. to move it just as he starts off with it the house goes whoosh on one side oh, yeah. and Captain Bat had a heart attack you know they had to dig the water out and right. fix it all back up and line it back up and carry it over on a medical me, a medical a metal track oh and bring it back here that afternoon it was a mess the back of the both of the barns are mine and this one's my house and that's that was just an old tenant house so I use it for a storage house now. I might not have gotten any. Okay, that's fine. No bills today. That's great. No junk mail. Yeah, that's right. Sanger Debt, yeah. Uncle Des, people who lived in the house we're in. Well, Lauren, let me ask you this. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you remember growing up with your mom and daddy? I don't remember anything. Oh, come on. I really don't. I'm one of these people that don't remember things like that. Really don't. You never got in trouble, so much trouble as a little boy you got a whipping or anything? No. I was service, wasn't you? Well, then, then you and Ruby got married. How long after you came out of service? About five years. And you all moved in with your daddy and... We moved in with my daddy and mama on account of my mama having a back a ruptured disc. We lived with them about almost five years Ruby was to just take like care of her. Uh, yeah, yeah. I never have seen her. She wasn't a, she wasn't a stranger from the first time I seen her. So now she no. was just the same. But she's she's very much the same every time you see her. Very seldom she's changed anything. But she um. I remember working hard back in the farm in the country and putting in the back of days and stuff like that, but nothing real exciting that I can ever remember happened when I was a boy. I remember that you always come to our house on Sunday that, That's the thing that I can remember when we used to go to your house on Sundays. So you all would and go down to that pond and it would be ice Oh, out. man, we used to have a time there now. And you all would have all the socks <coughs> and shoes. And Mama would say, Gertrude, you gotta make those children put on their socks and shoes. She said, Rosa, when they get cold enough, they'll put on their socks and That's shoes. That's right. But I remember y'all would go to that pond and just slide yeah, on that skating on the ice. Yeah. Animal and birth and all those, the one right there by, off behind the beehives. You remember where the beehives used to be? That used to be one big thing too, because we used to go down there when they were robbing the bees. And that used to seem right to me, that used to take about a week. They must have had 30 or 40 hives. My daddy, oh, I can remember my daddy always had come and help rob them bees. And uh, we had, I think maybe one or two beehives at that time, but nothing like they did. And really, back in them days, syrup and honey, was the only sweet things we had. You can remember when we used to make molasses bread? Well, that was about the same thing as you made a, a pancake now. And that, back in them days, that syrup and molasses bread was something now that was, and I don't know that I ever went to your house to, that your mama didn't have some molasses bread in that cabinet. 
Milton's house in Cedar Swamp, where he and Aunt Catrude lived. He still lives here, and this being June of 1989, he's 91 years old. It's also where his grandson, Jimmy Tyler, who's about my age, and I would play many a happy time. Got the shed sort of there in the background and the grape arbor. We're going to see if we can walk back to the tobacco barn. The tobacco barns, and when the grown ups would want to get rid of Jimmy and me because we were giving them too much trouble, they'd give us a few slices of watermelon or a big pan of boiled peanuts and tell us to go out and sit under the shed at the tobacco barn and eat them. That suited us and it suited them too. So it worked out pretty well. I see y'all went to the old barn. Yep, went barn, out there. Around the house, yep. the grapevine. Told Hope how they'd string the tobacco and hang it in the barn. Yeah. Cure it. Mm -hmm. And the grapes on the barn? Real little right now. Yeah. It's going to be a while before they're ready. Oh, yeah. Well, they're not supposed to get ready until September. He said Linwood comes over two or three times a week to see him. Ruby's still cooking for him. Tell you, Ruby's been wonderful. daughter in the world could be any better than she's been. <laughs> Hello, Glenn. How are you tonight? It's been a long time since I've seen you. <laughs> My sisters insisted that I walk around the room and talk to everyone for a moment, so I'm going to walk around the room and talk to everyone for a moment. Well, it's good to talk with you, Glenn. <laughs> Here we have a mirror. You just don't have to be lost and looking for somebody to stumble in. <laughs> Linwood, wait, Linwood. You can't leave quite yet. Right. We got to get your pictures. Well, shoot it. It's being shot. <laughs> That's an as we speak. You need to bring your wife over here and introduce her to everybody. She's running on that. This is Lynn with Kyle. Milton Tyler so. Looking minutes ago. The best looking one of them. That's right. You try. I know I had more than ever. I appreciate it. Well, what I was going to say. And I hear Lucy's back in the house. Don't come to see her. Come to see her. I'll never get down there to see her. Isn't that so good? We laugh at her leave, and her mother has a bit of a treat for Sally. Oh, I remember where she went. And here is Everett D. Smith. Never knew your name was Clifford. He said, where did you get buck? I said, well, my mama said when I was little. You know, I had big eyes like a buck rabbit. That's what I said. Call it with We've got Vern and Catherine, the host and hostess. Well, you got quiet all of a sudden. Talked enough all that. <laughs> I was I was just about to get her picture and you called her away. My doctor took her. When I stop and go, I'm ready to go. See you later. See you later. 
So you were born in 1897. When were you born? 1897. Yeah. You were you were telling tales on me. Now what about Daddy when he was a little boy? Was he was my Daddy perfect when he was a little boy? Yeah. No. Perfect. I want to tell you about your Daddy when he was a little boy. <laughs> I'll tell you, we had a daddy that thought we ought to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and um, our mother and daddy, because Solon knows about our daddy, but he don't remember about our mother. But we had a mama that's a mama. But anyhow, after mother expired, I don't remember how old Sultan was. He was a good size. Two boy. and a half. Huh? Two and a half years old when she died. Yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, you grew up, you know, and he went, but we used to borrow clothes, a, a wash pot. That's the way we, you've seen that, I guess. Right, out in front of the old house, yeah. And uh, they, the wood, yeah. this was in the summertime, and the wood all was used up, so the wood job was used. So my daddy went down you know, on the side of the woods, right in the edge of the woods, and got a, a, a log to put to the fire. And he always wore his handkerchief sticking out of his pocket. Part of it was out, he said, yeah. Stuff your handkerchief down in your pocket, you dirty your pocket to get your handkerchief out. And that handkerchief always stuck at about two or three inches. Well, when he got this uh, log up on his shoulder, a bush caught the handkerchief and pulled it out of his pocket and it fell on the ground. And he had the log of wood on his shoulder. And he told someone to pick it up. He said, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> they told him the second time. Anyhow. Well, he, he put the log down, and he got him a switch, and he switched him a little bit. You know. So he picked it back up, and then told him, that's when he told him, he said, now pick it up. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but I'll tell you now, when he put that log back on his shoulder the second time and told him to pick it up, he picked it up. My daddy, boy, when he whipped you, he was brutal. Just absolutely brutal. But you see, the first time, second time and when he, he picked it up. Yeah. So that's how good he was. He was good when he was made to be good. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn was good when he was made to be good. So that, I didn't get a whip in the <laughs> well, What was it about, uh, you said we, you thought me and our was Perfect parents when we had. Oh, yeah, when, when Evelyn. Five, six when yeah, Evelyn yeah. was born, because that was born before Evelyn yeah. was born. Y'all, my heart, so I was married a long time before Evelyn was born, anyhow. But she was as near a perfect child. Well, I mean, she was just perfect. That's all. And boy, I thought everybody ought to wait 15 years. <laughs> and then Clem came along and he changed my mind. <laughs> oh. uh, Glenn would crawl underneath the table just like my kids did, you know, anything, anything. He was a busy boy. Yeah. Uncle.
Uncle Ellie's old house here in Jacksonville. <laughs> that was after Solon was married. I had a pitcher pump in the bathtub over in this house over there. And that's the way we got out of war. Yeah. And uh, my brother-in-law racked you to pull a plumber. But you can't pump water that far. Well, he said, you go out there and I'll show you. Well, you see, when I put the pipeline down, I had a sag in it, mm -hmm. and that water never did run back all the way. It always stayed in that sag. So my pump in the bathroom was always prime. Mm -hmm. That was engineering. <laughs> <laughs> about the laundry a oh, little bit ago. Yes, I can remember my mother washing clothes, doing the laundry as you would know it today. And there was what we called a wash shed, which was an open building, one side closed with a little roof. And my mother had a big, just a huge wash tub and a wash board. And she would be washing her clothes was one hand scrubbing on the board and would ask me to go to the house and bring her a drink of water. And with that, I would hand her the water. She continued to scrub and drink in the water, glass of water with it just running down her chin. And in the meantime, asking my dad if he had been out sticking the clothes, which was in a big black tub with a fire underneath and the clothes would just bubble up and for, her, for him to stick it meant to take that stick and poke that piece of cloth down. That was only with the white clothes without sheets and, and white towels. You would not do that with colored clothes. And the soap that she was using was called lye soap. And the lye soap was made out of the fat that came from when they butchered the hogs. So, in the um, lye. And yeah. the lye, and yeah, they put a can of lye in with the fat, and that made the soap. So, needless to say, it was very strong. And even the watermelon was lowered down in the well to get cool. In mm -hmm. and, and a, a gallon of milk, a rope was tied around the little handle on the bottle of milk. So did you have ice boxes or just put we them had in, the, an ice, in the well? Well, one time we had an ice box. No, we put it in the fireplace in the chimney because my daddy would go, the ice man would come by in a truck and daddy would go and he had those big tongs like you picked up the big block of ice and he would wrap it in burlap bags and put it in the chimney, the fireplace. That was the coolest place in the house during the summer. So where did the water go when it melted? Now that, I don't know. <laughs> I doubt that it ever melted, but so much we would use well, that ice used up. It up. <laughs> the way they kept the eggs, too, you know, oh, with no yeah. refrigeration, would put it in a box of salt, and uh, that would keep it cool. You remember that? I remember that, and I remember Mama saying, uh, Daddy said to Mama, I'm going to Aiken, South Carolina, and I need $700. So my mother said, come with me to the smokehouse. The smokehouse is where they hung the meats. And on that hoop of cheese, uh, cheese hoop was salt, and then the eggs were right. on that. That kept the eggs cold. But under the hoop <laughs> was 
out the Your money, savings account. money <laughs> in a jar, and Mama would say, you watch that dough, Tootie, watch that dough, and she was digging underneath, got the jar, counted seven $100 bills out for my daddy, and that was a 1937 right. Chevrolet, the first car we ever had. Right. But did daddy but, lose all of his money one time? No. In the bank, Mama, Mama, Mama lost, lost the money. Yeah. When she first got married, she had a few hundred dollars saved and put it in the bank in K Street. And that's when the Depression came. And everybody, you know, people personally owned banks then. And when, this, when it got to be real bad, they took all the money, everybody's money, uh -huh. across the bank. Uh -huh. And she lost all she had, so I can see why she would have So that's why it was very money. Yeah. I, I remember one time, Everett and Buck used to save their money together, and that was buried too. And Mama, you know, they'd give it to her, and she'd bury it in smokehouse. Mm -hmm. And one day, she took the money out, and we had it scattered all over the dining room. <laughs> it had molded. Oh, no. <laughs> so... <laughs> Nobody could come in the dining room that day, but it was molded, and we had to clean all that money. Before I can remember, Daddy did have two talents on the place. I've always known one. And um, they were called sharecroppers then, and they got a third of the crop that they planted, and we got the two-thirds. And that's how they paid to live there, and also got had some uh, cash money from, too. From what yeah. they, um, grew, but anyway, they never could uh, carry themselves financially through the winter. So we would have to loan them money, and then when the crop was sold, they, they got paid back. Too. Paid back. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Daddy, we had a can mill, which was two big rollers. Do you remember that, seeing the can mill? I have seen one. It's yeah. not necessarily that one where a mule went round. Right, right, right. right. Uh -huh. And two big cylinders that you put the stalk of corn in at the beginning of the two cylinders rolling in opposite directions, and the corn of, I mean, the cylinders squeezed out the juice, and then it was put in a pan over fire mm -hmm. and, and syrup made. Mm -hmm. And Daddy got every seventh gallon. They got mm -hmm. six, and he got one for the use of the mill. Okay. So, so mm -hmm. um, then in the winter time, they would buy back the syrup. It <laughs> 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 was a losing had, situation for them. Right? Yeah. They yeah. would buy back the syrup that we had gotten from them, and some that we had too. But um, so that's. You know, how they survived and how we survived. And then they had the wooden buildings that they lived in, the houses, had fireplaces and a stove and everything, like everybody's house. And, but they had cracks in the walls, you know, that air would come through cold air. And they always used all the paper that we could give them, and they made a paste out of flour and sealed the cracks, but um, we certainly grew up without electricity, kerosene lamps, and you know, no bathrooms, of course. <laughs> but Daddy would get up every morning and start the stove, right. the and cooking the stove, place. the cooking stove, and, and he it. would put the iron skillet on for the ham or the meat and put a pot of grits on before right. Mama and went in the before kitchen. Before she got up. Yeah. And then she would bake that pan of biscuits. It was the size of the oven. It would just fit in the oven every morning. Mm -hmm. biscuits. Mm -hmm. had biscuits, hot now, biscuits. Now, were they high biscuits or thin biscuits? They were, were, they pre were pretty high, I would say. Not, not extremely high, but the best biscuits I have ever eaten in my life. You can't make them like that? Carol, yeah. Carol, said, <laughs> Carol said, Mama, why didn't you all Burn get a biscuits. recipe? I said there was no recipe. Uh -uh. She just did a hand down in the bowl and scooped up the shortening. And by the way, the shortening was homemade too. Now, what would a normal day be? You know, as far as, all right, you, you already told me about your mom mm -hmm. getting up after the 
kitchen got warm, so to mm -hmm. speak, and right. be ready to fix the rest of the meal. But then everybody ate a pretty big breakfast right. and then went out to do some chores. What kind of chores did you all have to do? Well, before, when we were in school, before we went to school, every bed in the house was made, everything. We had to do that. And that was a lot of beds. It right. was. We had, to, we had to, you know, clean up so Mama could go on and do other things that she had to do. When school was not in season, you know, when it was mm -hmm. summertime, then we would have to go and maybe unload a barn of tobacco so that they could fill it again with tobacco. You know, have the sticks would hang on the, the rafters. Okay. It took about four days to cure the tobacco and then it was ready to come out and be put in the pack house. So you had to unload that barn real early before the workers came there to crop tobacco again. But before they happen, that happened with the tobacco, you had to suck a tobacco, pull the little suckers between all of the leaves of tobacco, up and down those rows. Top it. Right. The look bloom, for worms. The bloom that look, was on oh, the worms, worms, yeah. Worm the tobacco. With a can of kerosene in your hand and you would drop that worm in as you pick the worms out. Ooh, the boll weevils good. the same way. You'd have to go with the with cotton, the cotton and pick the boll weevils and put them in a bottle and you got five cents a hundred. <laughs> but every day we had to bring in stove wood oh, yeah. and wood for the fireplace and every Saturday we had to sweep the yards because right. everyone that went by the Neesmith house said we had the cleanest yard and, in the country. And I think I know why, but for the video, why was the yard swept, not mowed? Because we had no grass. It was right. all yeah, dirt. Yeah. We hoed the grass. Right. If a weed would come up, we right. would hoe Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You had to get rid of the weeds. <laughs> you did not, grass, you did not allow that. You so grass was a weed. <laughs> and when you talk about sweeping, sweeping those brooms were homemade. Yeah, Mom you had didn't, made the brooms. You didn't, no, I'm talking about the ones in the yard. It was nothing but like a limb of a tree and all the leaves off of it tied oh, together. Yeah. That's what you swept. That was the yard broom, right. but then the house broom Mama That's, made. No, yeah, they was, it was made out of some kind of straw. Broom oh. straw, they Broom straw, broom straw. yeah. Mm. But, do you remember you know, the scrub brush? It was a board with holes. And you'd a, take shucks, corn shucks, and pull it through. Okay. And pull it through till it was tight and pull it through. The knot, the oh. top of the corn would hold it would hold. and this would be your brush. This is if how they, you scrub. The scrubbing board was a piece of wood about that thick mm -hmm. and they took an auger and did and holes cold. and then they soaked the, the corn shucks a while so they, so they would pull, pull through pull through that. And then when they oh, mm -hmm. right. Hmm. Good scrubbing. I mean good scrubbing. In Hazel were all, all the children born Once at home or were any born in hospitals? Yes, uh, they all were born at home, and I remember Toots' birth more than any, well, I didn't remember the others, but uh, there was this little black woman who was a midwife sitting at, by the fire when we got up the next morning, and she said, well, you've got another little baby, a little doll, and Marvin, who was, I don't know the difference in age, but probably... 15 years old at the time, and he said, another baby, and I don't think he suspected that Mama would, was going to have a baby. Yeah. I do think, though, that we must have been the most self-sufficient family living, because oh, yeah. really and truly you could almost survive on what you could do, what you could produce, mm -hmm. without having to depend on anything, anybody. We had lots of fruits and vegetables, and mm -hmm. even when you gathered the butter beans, you picked the dried beans too, and saved those. And at the end of the season, then you had the way we buy dried beans in the grocery store. We already had them, so I, I don't can't think of anything that we really had to have that we didn't provide for ourselves. 
Well, did on on weekends or Sunday afternoons did you have family or friends to come visit? Spend the afternoon or the evening? Yeah. And we could we play church. We could not. I remember one Sunday we were out there playing ball in the yard and you know a home run you'd mark it down. And Mama came out and she said, "Y'all can just stop, children. If you're gonna play serious, you can't play." Serious was we were keeping well, track, keep score, huh? you know, but we'd already been in the house and somebody on the pump organ and we'd pass the hat playing church. We were taking up the lift. <laughs> we really entertained ourselves, oh, didn't gosh, we? Absolutely. We um, had, the first music that we had that was recorded music was a phonograph. We uh, called it, Sally has it as far as I know. Yeah. And I think she has some of the cylinders. Yeah. Have you ever seen them? Those cylinders white about cylinders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Millie taught me the little I knew about dancing for a long time. And you know what? Were you allowed to dance? Tur tur <laughs> tur yeah, no, we could dance. We can have dances at the house. Yeah. I remember that. Right. But turkey in the straw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then Roman, Roman in the gloaming. <laughs> Roman in the gloaming. Oh, that's neat. Just silly songs. But that's what we had. But the ball of peanuts, we really started in the early age. You know, probably cut our teeth on ball of peanuts. <laughs> and they were but, cooked in the pot that they ball closed. I in. always wondered. Well, you know, if it's boiled, it's boiled. Right. I mean, it was clean. I, it's I, always, I really always wondered why our peanuts looked so light colored when they were balled. You know, the whole. Think it was leftover lime. Right. So. I just figured that thing out some time ago. Because yes. I've got a picture of. My grandfather standing right. at that big right. black right. pot, yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. he used to love the peanuts, and um, he would go to Morrisville every week, which was five miles away, to buy groceries and bring them back in the buggy. And he has said he's taken peanuts with him and he ate it all the way there and <laughs> all, all the way back. But we used to send our hard-earned cash, picking bow weevils, <laughs> five cents, and you'd get five Baby Ruth bars, pretty big, uh -huh. penny a piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was one log, don't you remember some kind of log that had... Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. ...in it for a nickel. It uh -huh. was really... A, was two oh. bits of peanut butter through it. But it's, you know, you could save your money and before you went back to school get a permit. Mm -hmm. Two dollars and a half. And they would put those rollers in your hair, and then you have all these wires have you coming seen in. I've seen pictures of them. Like it right. looks like an right. alien or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> it looked like an it looked like alien. you were ready for space. <laughs> but if, if they left this, that heat on too long, you were ruined. It just, your Frizzy. hair was yeah. so frizzy so you couldn't stand it. And That's Mama shaved Daddy. I thought I've always thought that was the strangest thing, Mama. And Daddy never shaved him. With a straight razor. Mama shaved Daddy all the time. Well, you know, yeah. I can truly say, and I think Ann could verify that too. I don't ever remember seeing mm -hmm. Mama really mm -hmm. upset with anyone remember, or mm -hmm. about anything. And I've heard Edith remember Edith saying the same thing. She never saw Mama. And I said, well, oh, I know. had one child, and I wish I could say that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, maybe maybe she was just tired from all that work. <laughs> she didn't have any energy left to be upset. I, I, I think it was her nature to be just, just, mm -hmm. be just, just peaceful. Peaceful. 